Mr. Danielson will be filming us today. Uh, so thank you for being here, Bruce. Item 26 is a second reading. An ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota rezoning property at 1200 East 3rd Street from the S1 General Institutional District to the C2 Commercial Neighborhood and Streetcar District, petition number 5397, 2016, and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. Planning Commission recommends approval 6 to 0. Jeffrey? This is a two acre site on North Cliff Avenue and 3rd Street. Uh, it's the old Franklin School the Foss Alternative School that's been vacant for a while. This two acre site is being rezoned from S1, which is an institutional school site, to C2 commercial site. The commercial site would also be used as an office site. The parking would be on the north as well as the south. So they're gonna expand their parking. They would meet their parking requirements. They'd have 82 parking spaces on the site. It's a two-story building, and again, retail on the ground floor and office on the second floor. Uh, at both meetings for Planning Commission and City Council, we've had one neighborhood representative coming to ask us about some issues. Um, I pulled this down off of Google or Bing, does it, one of the others. But you can see their questions were really in regards to the two-acre or the two-story building has a traffic signal at Cliff and Third. Um, it's not heavily used now because there's a not, a, not a lot of traffic coming in off of 3rd. The predominant movement's on Cliff, so they wanted to know about the traffic on 3rd and the placement of this bus stop on the northeast corner. You can see it also on their diagram for the site plan. So from that standpoint, we did reach out to Public Works Traffic Engineering, and they will continue to monitor both at this point. Um, even in this, this image, you can see there's not a lot of traffic on third. So in the long term, if there's not traffic on third, they'll probably, there's a warrant where they would not need the traffic to be stopping at third coming on the cliff. And they may, again, that's a big may, if it's not being needed there, they turn it to a stop sign so people could actually get easier onto and off of Cliff Avenue. Mm. So that's how they've kind of looked at addressing that. But otherwise, um, it's office on the second floor and commercial on the main floor. Jeff, thank you. Folks, again, second reading. Anybody interested in commenting on this topic? Welcome. Jeff, would you put that picture of the yes, school sir. in the corner? That one. The, uh, some members of the neighborhood asked me, then Bruce Danielson, they asked me to come up, there was an emergency and with Tim Stanga and he asked me to come up and just remind everybody and Jeff just said something here that it's very disingenuous. You look at that photograph, we don't know what time of the day that was. We don't know anything about that day, it could be a Sunday. You know, if you ever follow the Google cars and have anything to do with them, they will often find a time on a busy street so that they get as few public images as possible, the fewest number of license plates, they don't want to catch people. And so they will go in and they will find a, the time period where these types of images work. So to be saying that there isn't traffic on 3rd Street without a traffic study is not being truthful. And that's, that's a serious problem and that's what Tim keeps coming back with. And nobody seems to be able to answer that question about all the things that are gonna happen there. Uh, we talk about, uh, I personally would love to see this building being used, but there's some issues here that uh, there's been very little ability for public input. Most of the people that have anything to do with this, uh, if you go around the properties, there are very few homeowners that are directly in that zone that is the problem, it's the wider neighborhood and the way the people are using. Another question was truck traffic on Sherman. Sherman is a narrow little street that uh, has been jammed with cars in the past. And so there's a concern about where are these trucks going to be unloading when they come into this to restock the stores. And we're talking semis and so on. And if you've got a parking lot there and the parking lot is jammed full, How's a semi gonna back up to the door to unload? So where are these grocery trucks gonna be unloading but blocking the traffic for those people that live on Sherman? 
So parking on the streets was bad enough when it was a school. Now there may be dozens more cars being parked on the street and nobody's even talking about any of this. I know the neighborhood would like to see something happen with this building, but nobody's addressing the concerns that uh, they seem to be having, so thank you. Folks, anybody else want to engage the council on this topic? Councilors? Councilor Neitzert. Uh, Mr. Schmidt, could, could you tell me if, can you unload and unload on, on a street, or do you have to do it off street? You cannot park and load and unload on a street like that from a cut commercial standpoint. On a local street, you could, where you'd be a homeowner, but on a commercial site like this, you would have to have come into the commercial parking lot to load and unload. So if that happens, it's a violation Correct. that can be enforced? Yes. Okay. Could I just make another oh, comment? Please. You bet. I, I did get contacted by the same citizen, and I will tell you, I, looking into this, they've provided the same amount of parking that everybody else has to provide. I, I mean, if, if I'm a grocery store, I can provide all my parking, and somebody could conceivably park on the street. It could happen. I mean, I, it could happen. But they provide the parking that they need if, if they violate the square footage requirement for example if they want to build if they go get a building permit they're gonna to have to provide more parking if they just build without asking that's a building violation and it's a zoning violation there's ways to enforce that there was some concern that more would be finished in the future so they meet all the requirements and it's a great redevelopment and I I, I just don't see a problem and I'll move to approve thank you counselor Second, Urban Bach. thank you counselor and uh, yes counselor Staley um, I have a question, Jeff, and, and maybe you're not, maybe you can't answer it, but let's say uh, after this gets developed and is off and running, how hard is it to go back and, and work with the traffic situation then? I mean, they will these things could still be remedied, right? They will continue to monitor and looking at it, because right now, um, they are monitoring the traffic on third now and there's not a lot of traffic as I tried to say, but I did misstate it. I bet I was trying to state what Public Works was saying. There's currently not traffic on third through their traffic reviews, but they will monitor it as it opens and look at it. If there's not a warrant, if it's not generating enough traffic, then they're trying to help the citizens be able to get off and they'll continue to look at the traffic issues on third. So we can assure this, these residents that we're going to, yeah. yeah They'll do that we in all businesses and all locations in the city of Sioux Falls. Councilor Starr. Yes, thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Um, Jeff, if you don't mind. I, and maybe this is more geared towards the applicant, but when I look at the, the photo and the parking areas, there's only, did it show just one? Can you bring that back up for me? Thank you. I'm sorry, my screen's yep. a little bit different. Yep. We just got to wait for Tony to catch up sure. downstairs. There's parking to the north and to the south. Right, but my question is, mm -hmm. if you had a semi-delivering on a regular basis, whether it's a grocery store or UPS or mm -hmm. whatever, I'm only see am I looking at this wrong? I'm seeing one place um, from the east to get into the parking lot, but to turn a semi around, or I guess what is the plan for loading and unloading? Would the, app the applicant is here, or would could they answer I how that <laughs> happens? Jeffrey is the applicant here. Welcome. The question was uh, if they had to bring something in, a pretty substantial size, whether it be a semi or small or large truck, how would they load and unload and where would they do that? Uh, just, and, I'm Mike Houck. I'm representing you, the, the uh, applicant here. Um, and I'm at a little bit of a disadvantage because I'm filling in for Sam Assam who's out of town. Uh, and my understanding was that this has all been kind of looked at and, and worked out. I know that the parking was a concern uh, previously in the, the loading and unloading, and, and a large part of it probably depends on the tenants uh, and what types of stores they are and, and what they might have. In terms of the access, uh, perhaps Mr. Sadat can uh, address uh, kind of what the plan there is. Carlos Sadat, uh, City of Sioux Falls. Well, we have a parking in the back. Uh, we can access from there, and it's going to be a small stores. Uh, I don't need. I don't believe we're going to have a very huge amount of semi or big, uh, you know, uh, uh, trucks going to come here. Normal trucks, and we have access from the back. I think, like every another store in the city of Sioux Falls, I think has got enough parking and been steady money time, and uh, you know, uh, with the city. Uh, requirement was that, and we have all the parking ready, and I think um, that's all I can say. 
Mr. Rod, the, the question that Councillor Starr had was if there would be a larger truck that you had to load or unload, where would you do it at? That's in the back parking lot in the back of the school. And Jeff, could you point that out or so that the people of Sioux Falls or Councillor Starr could see that? They're going to be to the south. All right. We're still ten minutes from tip off. We're okay. So now my mouse just left again. So they'd be able to come from the south on that east entry and then loading and loading on that southeast area so that they could pull straight through and then heading back out into third as they just, as he was stating. So okay. if they came in on Sherman, then they'd come in on, on third. That's what he was saying. On the south side, the back. <clears throat> okay. Councilor Starr, does that help you at all? I made it clear as mud, but... I'm okay. Just, I'm just having a hard time visualizing how a, a, a semi or a large truck would get into the parking lot turn. It sounds like they're not going to turn. They're just going to go in, and unload, and then go that, out. That answer. Does that sound fair? That's where I'm headed. So okay. Thank you. You bet. Thank you, Councillor Starr. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Councillor Buck. I wonder if it's the definition of back. We're all used to the front door of Franklin Elementary being on the south side of the building. That's Councillor right. Starr. The back side of the building is the north parking lot, right? What you're saying now is that that will be the new front side of the building, the main parking lot on the north side. The south side will be the back, and that's the loading and unloading zone, that drive through. Correct. Am I understanding that correctly? Yeah, that's correct. Good, thank you. Well, very good. Uh, we do have a motion to approve, and it has been seconded. A Roll call vote, please. Council members Rolfing? Yes. Selberg? Yes. Starr? Yes. Staley? Yes. Erickson? Yes. Erpenbach? Yes. Kylie? Yes. Neitzert? Yes. Van is passed 8 to 0. Thank you. Item 20. Could you uh, put your cookies down, please? Uh, security, escort this gentleman out, please. Come on, Soda Pop, let's go. 